you say what you say he touched me
God, God, my God. Something. Something. Happened to me. second time that that's happened but through it all 
Come on now. Talk to no, it's a, say tried it, but it's all right because I know I'm covered in the blood. So you all bear with me. I'm not pastor. I, I'm not, um, I don't know, just, you all know this is Kirsten. This is just Kirsten. So um, I just ask your prayers right now. Uh, that I can bring this word. But before we proceed, let us see God before we do so. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you this morning, not one of so much eloquence and may not be able to preach like Paul or, or, or break the word down like Moses or, but Father, this is Kirsten coming to you this morning. <laughs> this is just Kirsten. All of those titles, not coming to you as a CFO, not coming to you as an usher, not coming to you as an officer, but God, I'm just coming to you as Kirsten because I need your help right now. This has been a difficult week, not just for us personally, but as a nation, Father God. It's been a rough week. It's been a rough weekend. But God, Will you stand up in me? Will you give me the courage and the boldness to speak this word? This was a hard word. But you've never been one to leave someone hanging when they need your help. So God, I'm reaching to you because I don't know anywhere else to turn. Lord, let this word convict all of us. Let it talk to me too. Let it correct me to let it convict me also but let us know lord what time it is it's getting late in the day father it's getting late it's getting late god and we don't have time to play games anymore it's real god it is real out here people are hurting people are tired people are weary we're tired of seeing our brothers and sisters perishing father god we're tired of seeing our children perishing Lord, we need you so much in this hour. We need you, Lord. We don't know nowhere else to turn. I'm not thinking about Washington or even Jefferson City. But God, we need to get on our knees right now and turn to you. Well, we need to seek your guidance, well, your wisdom. Yes. We've tried everything else, God. But right now, we're turning to you. So Lord, be with us in this hour and always. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As Reverend Christine read this morning, the scripture that will be the basis for our word today was from Romans, the fifth chapter, the 19th verse. It says, For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. What you say? What you say? And the title of my Word this morning, the most deadly virus of all. What you say? What you say girl? The most deadly virus. What you of say? All. <laughs> you better talk up in here. There's a virus going around. Oh my God, my God. And it's been in the world a long time. My God, my God. <laughs> and there's some characteristics about this virus. Mm. It attacks through an entry point. Mm -hmm. Our eyes. Our ears, what you say, deep. our hearts. It attacks through an area of weakness. What? Oh, Lord. That's where it strikes. It spreads quickly and it corrupts. Oh, it cannot be solved through conventional or over the counter solutions. You can't throw money at it. You can't get a pill for it. Come on, girl. There's no vaccine for it. It becomes more dangerous and deadly when it's left unaddressed. <laughs> and if you don't address it, it will destroy its host. And we're all carriers of this virus. It's been passed down for many generations. It causes social and spiritual dis distancing. And it can dull your senses. It can make you blind. Mm. It can make you deaf. Ooh. It can make you lame Ooh. and crippled. Ooh. 
It has several strains. You may have heard of them. Greed. Greed. Lust. Lust. Pride. <laughs> Lupus. Gluttony. Revelry. <laughs> drunkenness. And sexual immorality. Come on now. I know <laughs> there's a lot of talk about COVID-19, but that's not the virus I'm talking about. This virus is more deadly, more poisonous, and it wreaks more damage than COVID-19 ever did. And you know what that virus is? Well, I'll tell you. It's S-I-N, sin. That is the virus that is the most deadly of them all. A virus is defined as a sub-microscopic infectious agent that replicates only inside the living cells of an organism. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the definition of sin is the transgression of divine law, willful or deliberate violation of religious or moral principles. As a verb, it says to offend against a principle or a standard. And so today we know of many viruses throughout our lifetime. Many of us have had them. The flu, the common cold, chicken pox. Some, the dreadful virus of HIV, especially in our community, has been a most formidable enemy. Come on. In animals, such a virus is called rabies. Uh, other viruses, SARS. Um, my mother, when she was a little girl, um, she gave me memories of when polio was rampant. And we've heard of one not too long ago called Ebola. Those are just some of the viruses that have run rampant through this world and through some of our communities. This virus, sin, I know there's a lot of tracing going on, trying to trace the origins of COVID. <laughs> they have workers out, I know in the county, St. Louis County, they've got workers out trying to trace where these origins of uh, COVID come from. But you see, there is an origin for this particular virus called sin. And it comes from the book of Genesis chapter three. And just to give a little warning, I'll be jumping around a little bit. Um, because I believe in backing the word with the word. I'm not one to put my own opinion into it. I let God speak. So the origin of sin, if we look at it, the third chapter of Genesis in the Garden of Eden where Adam and Eve fell because they let a little wicked low-down serpent get in their ear and give them all kinds of promises. If you eat this fruit, you will be like God. Your eyes will be opened. And poor Adam and Eve, they went for the okie doke. Come on now. And so from that point on, in every human being, from that point on, we have had to deal with this particular virus. So that's where the origin is, when they fell in the Garden of Eden. And this virus from that point, it was passed to all mankind. It even passed to Adam and Eve's sons, Cain and Abel. Come on. And when you look at Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 through 7, it says, after, after Cain murdered his brother Abel, and then it continued to spread from then. And it got so bad that it says in Genesis chapter six, five through seven, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Come on. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air for it repented me that I have made them. Now you know that's sad. If we made God so sorry well, that he made us in the first place, you know 
they were doing some pretty wild stuff to make God even sorry that he made man. And I wonder sometimes today, is the Lord sorry once again? When he sees what's going on in Minneapolis and what happened here in Ferguson not too long ago, in LA and Miami and all over, is he sorry again? Is he sorry again that he created us? And from this virus, we see some symptoms <laughs> of this virus. And looking at Genesis 3, verses 16 through 19, it's my symptoms. <laughs> When Adam and Eve fell, there were some consequences. And the Lord said, unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow in thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Well, so there were some symptoms. There's some more symptoms that I want to bring to your attention. There's spiritual death. Mm -hmm. Because we know in Romans what it says about the wages of sin. Mm -hmm. It says the wages of sin is death. Spiritual death. And also physical death. Come on. Because before Adam and Eve fell from the Garden of Eden, there was no death. There was no sickness. Mm. There was no temptation, but once they fell, now we may three score and 10, may be the number of years we have, and some have lived to be 100, but we won't physically live as long as we did before we fell, and that was a consequence. Come on. Another symptom of this virus is broken relationships. When we sin against one another, when we hurt one another, it does damage to relationships. People could have been friends for years, but through a lie or maybe committing adultery with somebody's spouse, their relationship gets broken. Another symptom of sin is guilt and resentment. It can make you bitter. There's so many examples throughout the word where um, Saul comes to mind. The Lord gave specific instructions for what he was supposed to do with the Amalekites. But Saul was disobedient. Mm -hmm. The Lord said kill everything. Mm -hmm. He said every man, woman, child, animal. He said leave nothing alive. Leave nothing breathing. Yes, Lord. But Saul had his own idea. Come he on. said, well, I'm going to save the best of the sheep and the, mm -hmm. the oxen and we'll give a sacrifice. Came back. <laughs> and see, once again, he didn't follow instructions, so he just kept doing what he wanted to do, and Samuel had to call him on it. Mm -hmm. And he said, what is this I hear? I hear donkeys, I hear cattle. And of course, here comes Saul saying, well, Lord, we wanted to give a sacrifice. But Samuel said, obedience is better than sacrifice. If you had done what the Lord told you to do, the Amalekites would be wiped out. But because you didn't obey, they will continue to be a, a thorn in your side throughout your reign. And Saul, that wasn't the only time Saul was disobedient. And it got so bad that Saul got so disobedient after a while, the Lord took his hands off of him. That's dangerous. Come on. Saul never seemed to get it right, and it cost him, and it also cost his son Jonathan. Jonathan was supposed to be the rightful heir to his throne, but because of his disobedience, not only did it cut off Saul's Come on now. line, it cut off Jonathan's line, and anyone in the house of Saul was completely cut off. So sin is not something to play with, but it made Saul, and as David began to ascend and grow in, in, in power, Saul became very resentful, yes. even bitter, yes. even so much so that he wanted to kill David. That's dangerous when you let sin fester in your heart so long, you actually want to hurt somebody. Come on. That's scary. 
Another symptom of sin is emotional pain. It hurts. Sin hurts. It may feel good for a moment. Sin hurts. But later on, it says that the pleasures of sin is only for a season. It will come back to you after a while. And it will haunt you. It will haunt you. And it will hurt. Not only will it cause you pain, but it causes pain to people around you. Come on. And this is the most dangerous symptom of it when it's left untreated. Ooh. A seared conscience and a cold heart. Wow. Okay. That's dangerous okay. because when your conscience is seared, you, you can't repent. It's dangerous to get so far out there that you don't even, when you do wrong, it doesn't even bother you anymore. That's a dangerous place to be. Mm. That's a dangerous place to be. Mm. If you can do wrong so long, it don't even bother you. It's like breathing for you. It's natural. Mm. You feel like that's just, this is the way I am and blah, blah, blah. But no, don't ever allow yourself to get so far beyond the reach of God that sin doesn't even bother you anymore. Another symptom of sin is selfishness. Wow. I remember when I was um, in middle school, I went to a, a Lutheran middle school, but we had like a, a Bible uh, class. And I remember the word sin. If you notice, the letter I is in the middle of it. So sin, I, what I want. Sin always seems to center around what we want to do, what we want. We don't want to wait on the Lord. We just want what we want. We see that all through the word when Sarah, she couldn't wait on God to bring her Isaac. So she went and got her own plan and an Ishmael was created. Be careful that you don't create Ishmael. Because an Ishmael, while it may seem to solve your problem at the moment, it creates consequences later on. The consequences were strife in the house. There was rivalry between uh, Sarah and Hagar. They, they, there was not a beef in the house. So be careful when you try to create an Ishmael because of our selfishness and our impatience. Mm. Another symptom of sin that there was was a loss of harmony in creation. Before the fall, Animals were in communion with people. You could walk up to a lion and pet him, but you wouldn't dare do that now because then you'll be that lion's lunch. Amen. So there was a loss of harmony between man and woman as well because Adam said, this woman you gave me, she, she, she made me do it. And then Adam said, well, that serpent, you know, the... I'm sorry, Eve said the serpent made me do it. <laughs> and so it was like they was all pointing fingers all oh, over the no. place. Nobody looked in the mirror. <laughs> so be careful with how sin can destroy harmony. And lastly, um, sin kills quickly. And we know that it does because our Savior, when he hung on the cross, he was dead within three hours. Because he took on every sin. Can you imagine the sin of every on, man, Kirsten. woman, and child on earth? Come on, Kirsten. It killed him in three hours. That's how deadly this thing is. And sin can make you indifferent. You better preach. Because when you're indifferent, you're not thinking about how your actions may affect somebody else. Come you on now. Spread a little nasty lie about somebody or... Oh my God. Uh, Take something that doesn't belong to you and you figure nobody saw you, mm. nobody caught you. And after a while, you think, oh, well, I got away with that. So Come on now. I'll just keep on and keep on and really? keep on until you become indifferent. You don't even care about anybody else and how your actions affect them, how your sin can affect somebody else. So this is a very awful virus, as we can see. It's a terrible virus. And it can infect some areas also. It, it, the areas it can affect, infect, I should say. Do you know that sin can infect your character and your integrity? Yeah. Well. Wow. If we look in the book of wow. Joshua, yeah. chapter 7. I'm going to go there for a minute. Take your time. It's a good word. 
there was a brother named Achan. And the children of Israel were going up to attack the city of Ai. And they went up to attack. And the thing was, though, Achan, they were given, the children of Israel were given a specific instruction not to take anything of the spoil. But Achan, again, he thought he was slick. Nobody saw me take it. Nobody saw me touch it. And he took it and buried it, figured he was home free. But when the children of Israel went up to attack Ai, they were not successful. And Joshua couldn't be like, what happened? You know, we, we were supposed to have the victory. But it didn't happen because, so that's the thing, when we do stuff, we think we can cover our tracks. But don't you know God sees everything we do? He sees us, whatever we're doing, what we're thinking, what's in our heart. We can't hide it from him. No. And so Achan thought he had covered his tracks. But he had not covered his tracks because the Lord said uh, to Joshua, he said, get thee up. Wherefore thou hast lied thus upon thy face? Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen, and dissembled also. And they have put it even among their own stuff. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore, except you destroy the accursed from among you. Come on. And so this action had consequences not only for Achan, but his family also. Not only was Achan stoned for his wrongdoing, but his family too. They suffered. So there was a lot of loss of life. So when we do wrong, we may think it's just, if it hits us, it just hits us. But no, it can hit your children. It can hit your friends, it can hit your household. The consequences can go far beyond what we may even think. So don't be like Achan. Don't touch the accursed thing. Don't be disobedient. Wow. Because the consequences can reach far beyond you. Wow. Another area that sin can affect, it can affect our relationships. All right. Jacob and Esau, there's another prime example of that as brothers. Because Jacob, with the help of his mother, a plan was devised to get the birthright that rightfully should have been Esau's as he was the firstborn. But again, Mama had a plan. Come on. Mama had a plan. I said, no, I'm not. Why do we think we, we can do better than God can? Why do we keep getting mixed up in things, but if we just let God work it. Come on. If Jacob was going to be the one, don't you know God would have worked that thing out? Yes, Lord. Jacob's mother, she didn't have to work so hard to try to make that happen. It would have happened eventually. But she devised a plan where she dressed Jacob up like Esau and Jacob's father couldn't see was blind, couldn't see very well, so he, she put all this stuff on him to make him smell like Esau, and when, when he, he would reach his hand out, he would feel the, 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 the animal skin, and okay, this is Esau. But of course, we know it wasn't. And so what happened was, if we look at Genesis 27, around verse 41, And it said that once the trickery had been done, said Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand, for then will I slay my brother Jacob. So see, the consequences is that brotherly relationship was broken, and even so much so that Jacob wanted, Esau wanted to kill Jacob. That's some anger. When you are so angry with somebody, you want to kill them. That's the consequence of how sin can affect our relationships. It can cause a lot of pain, a lot of bitterness, even hatred. 
Do you know sin can infect your marriage too if you're not careful? As we look at Second um, Samuel, Second Samuel, the eleventh chapter, and I know I'm jumping around a lot, but again, I let God's words words speak. We all know this is a familiar story of David and Bathsheba. Now, David. Another thing about sin, sometimes when you are somewhere you shouldn't be for too long, you can get in trouble. And that's what happened because David was on the balcony. He should have been out with his troops in battle, but he was back in the house, chilling, up on the balcony. And of course, well, what does his eyes see? Well, he sees a woman bathing in her yard. Now, a lot of times when I read this passage, I just want to scream at David, go back in the house, take your eyes off of her. Go back, go back in the house. You really should have been in battle, sir. You should have been with your troops. But he stayed there too long. Too long. Looking too long. Too long. And that's the thing about that sense. That's where that infection, remember what I said about the entry point? His eyes were his entry point. He was looking too long. He looked too long. And it got him in trouble because now he's trying to figure out, okay, how can I get with this, this woman? How can I get her? And her husband, Uriah, was doing what he was supposed to be doing. Uriah was obedient. He was out in battle taking bullets for David while David was at home where he shouldn't have been. And so we all know what happened. Yes. We know what happened. Yes. And so David again, thinking he had covered his tracks, nobody knew. But, bum bum bum, Bathsheba says, um, David, I got a bean in the oven. You got a baby on the way. It's like, uh oh. So now, got a problem. Consequence. All right. Got a problem. <laughs> Houston, we have a problem. So now David's got to try to figure out, okay, how can I cover this? So what he did was he had Uriah brought home. Say, go spend an evening with your wife. Rest from the battle. Kick your feet up. But Uriah, bless his heart, he was so loyal. He didn't go on. He slept outside, outside the king's door. And he said, how can I rest when my brothers are in combat? Uriah was loyal to a fault. His loyalty, he, the poor man, he didn't even know what was going on. He had no clue. So that didn't work. So David said, well, I'll invite him to dinner and, you know, give him a little Hennessy or cognac or something. Get him, you know, get him oiled up a little bit and maybe now get him drunk. So, you know, he'll figure he went home and was with his wife. But that didn't work either. Uriah still slept at the gate. So now David is really pressed. Because he don't want this getting out that, you know, he even got somebody's wife pregnant. So what he decided to do, he gave his commander, Joab, a letter. My God. He set Uriah up. My God. See how this infection gets you? Mm. Look how far out he's going now. He is actually setting up an innocent man to be murdered and has slept with his wife. Mm. Mm -hmm. So he gave Joab a letter and said, um, you know, put him in the front line. And then do a retreat so that when he'll, he'll when we when you retreat, he'll be struck and he will be killed. Come on. And so again, it went just as was planned. So then David took Bathsheba as his wife. But again, David thought he had it all squared away. But there was a prophet named Nathan that showed up one day. Well. <laughs> and that's the thing about it. Seems like the Lord will send you somebody that'll call you on your nonsense. He'll do that. He'll send a Nathan. And he told David a story about a rich man and a poor man. This poor man had a one little ewe lamb. He loved that little lamb. Treated it like a pet. Now this rich man, he had many flocks of lamb. He could have his pick. And there was a, a guest that came and was ready 
he needed, the, the rich man had a guest coming, so he had to fix a meal. So you would think he would just go out to the pasture and, and get a lamb and dress it and prepare it for the meal, but no. He went and took the poor man's one little ewe lamb, Come on. dressed it and cooked it, and here goes David. Now he's getting all heated, like, who did this? That man needs to die. Be careful what you say. Mm. Nathan said, you are that man. Wow. God has blessed you, wow. elevated you, made you king mm. of Israel. You could have had your choice of, of spouses, but you took Uriah's wife wow. and you shed blood to get what you wanted. So see, we have to be careful. Sin can even affect marriages. It pushed David not only to commit adultery, but murder. Talk about a double whammy. That's heavy. And because of that, the sin that he committed also infected his home and family life. Because Nathan prophesied and said, because you have done this, the sword shall not leave your house. And if you read a little further on, David's sons, there was strife between sons, Absalom and uh, Amnon. If you read those, you read a little further on. Absalom, his son, was killed. There was bloodshed in David's house. So there were consequences because of David's sin. Look how many people it affected. It affected Uriah. It affected Bathsheba. It affected his sons. His family line, and even Saul, that can play into that too. His family line was cut off. So sin is a serious thing to the Lord. And sadly, even sin can infect our churches. So many times we've seen televangelists or even those that are not so well known, when sin can come in, it can de destroy congregations, it can hurt families. Mm. It can even cause people to lose their faith in God. Well, That's how serious it is. People will walk away. Mm. So we have to be careful how we live. We never know who's watching. And it should prick our heart. Come on now. That our actions may cause somebody to walk away if we're not careful. We don't know who's watching. Yes. So we have to be careful to not let sin infect our churches. And this is real serious. Do you know sin can even infect your eternity? Because if you don't get born again and get your sins washed away, there's a place called hell that was created originally not for people, but it was for the devil and his angels. People weren't even supposed to be there. But when you don't repent of your sins and get born again and get washed in the blood, I'm sorry to say that that's going to be your destination. And I can't sugarcoat that. It is serious. That's how serious sin is to the Lord. He hates it. He can't stand it. That's right. He hates sin in any form. Well, whether it's gossip, uh oh, whether it's theft, whether it's creeping around on your spouse, whether it's fornication whether it's lying. Mm. Mm. It's the little thing, we, we like to categorize sin too. That's just a little white lie. That was just a little, no, no, no. There is no little and big sin. Sin is sin, period. There is no little and big. Help me, Lord. It's just as wrong to lie as it is to mess around with somebody you shouldn't be. It's just as wrong to take something that doesn't belong to you well, as it is to bear false witness against your name. Well, there are no degrees with God when it comes to sin. Wrong is wrong. So I know this has been a bit heavy to digest, and I'm sorry if I if I messed up Pentecost. I know we're supposed to be shouting, and but right now we have a virus in this nation. Come on, 
And what we see in Minnesota and all these places, this is because of the infection. America has an infection. And I'm not talking about COVID. I'm talking about S-I-N. And until we deal with this infection, I'm sorry to say, Minnesota won't be the last time. Ferguson won't be the last time. And it won't be until we get it right. But I got some good news for you. There, there is a vaccine for this. And that vaccine can be found. I'll even show you where it is. In the Word. Wow. It comes from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Starting at the third and fourth verse where it says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So that right there, that's the gospel right there. That is the gospel right there. It's right there in the Bible. Well, I'm sorry to break it to you, but the gospel is not the gospel according to Cadillacs in the garage. It's not the gospel according to Louis Vuitton. I'm sorry. It's not the gospel of how much is in your bank account. Material wealth has nothing to do with it. This is the gospel right here. And if you believe that and receive that, you got it. That is the gospel and nothing else. There's a lot of different gospels going around out here. But if you stick to 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 4, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. And the wonderful thing about this vaccine is of the gospel, it has antibodies in it. And those antibodies, when the Holy Spirit takes up residence inside of you, you have antibodies to build up a resistance to sin. So when you want to do wrong, girl, you better talk. If you want to do wrong, he'll talk to you. Say, uh, uh, daughter, don't do that. Uh, uh, son, don't do that. When we want to go off on somebody, when we, Lord knows, I've been tested on the highway because there's been times, ooh, you had to, you had to shut my, my mouth up. But you get antibodies. These antibodies come through the Holy Spirit. So when you want to do wrong. He'll, he'll pull you back and you'll have a defense. Oh he'll seal you oh and shield you from sin. And also, <laughs> this vaccine has some side effects, but they're good ones though. Okay. It ain't bad. Oh it's got some good side effects to it. And we can find those side effects if we go to Galatians, the fifth chapter. <laughs> Verses 22 and 23. But I want to set it up a little bit, so I'm going to back up a little bit to um, the 19th verse because, again, we know these are some of the symptoms we talked about, just to remind you. It said, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance. Emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So that's, that's the <laughs> symptoms again. But now, let's look at what the vaccine will do for us. So we go to verse 22, and it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. So you see, if you get this vaccine, and the thing about it, you don't have to wait a year or six months 
You can have it right now if you want it. And it's available to everybody. Rich or poor, black or white, suburb or city dweller, it's available. And all you have to do is surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ and he'll give it to you. Because it's already paid for. There's no copay, y'all. Jesus paid the copay when he shed his blood on Calvary. So the vaccine is paid for. It's free. You don't have to do anything to earn it. You can't pay for it. You don't have to have any special hookups or connections to get it. You don't have to call the CDC to get it. It's free. The gospel is free. Jesus is free to all. And if you get this vaccine, you'll have those antibodies, you'll have the defense, you'll be sealed against sin, and you will be sealed so when the day that the Lord calls you home, or the day of the rapture, whichever one comes first, you'll be safe and secure because you will have overcome the second death. You will have overcome the enemy. So, be blessed, but also in this hour, I implore you, if you don't know Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sins, get saved, and I'm dead serious. This is not a game. People are going out of here. Seems like since 2020 came in, people been dropping like flies, y'all. It's serious now. If you've been kind of dancing around and playing with it, get saved today while there's still time. Don't wait too late. Don't let the sun go down on you and you still be in your sins and perish. Get the gospel. Get saved. Know who Jesus Christ is. Let him know you because the most awful words of the Bible, I think, that Jesus spoke is when he said, I never knew you. Don't be in church all your life. Don't, don't think you got it. Know you got it for real because you don't want to stand there and hear him say that to you. That should put a shiver down everybody's spine. So make sure you know Jesus and make sure he knows you and don't let anything come between you and your God. Because that's what's going to get us through this. It'll get us through Minnesota. It'll get us through COVID. Stay in Christ. Don't let anything sway you. Don't let what the president says sway you. Don't let what the governor says sway you. You listen to God. You stay in this Bible. Let God speak to you. Don't you let nothing and nobody sway you from your faith in Jesus Christ because he is the only way that you're going to make it home. There is no other way. I must report to you. There is no other way. So I thank you for having the patience with me this morning, but this was a rough word. I know it's rough to hear, but it's rough, even more rough when you got to bring it. But I hope it just put a little bit of an urgency in us and a wake up call in us to know the hour is late. Yes, sir. It's late in the day. Yes. And we don't know when the Lord is going to come. But let us be ready without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. So when he shows up and we can hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter now into my father's joy. Thank you all so much, and God bless you, and I love you, and stay in the Lord. Thank you so much. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Amen. God bless you today. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Kirsten, for that powerful, powerful message today on this virus called sin. And we spend so much time listening to Dr. Fauci and others who are infectious disease experts, but God has given us our own infectious disease expert in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come on. Come on. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. That was a powerful message. Yes. Uh, amen. Yes. Let me just get one point of clarification. Everybody know I love Sister Kirsten. She's one of my favorite people. Certainly I agree with everything she said about that message, except one thing I must correct 
is when you said that that was not a Pentecost message, I must certainly wholeheartedly disagree. Amen. <laughs> Every bone and fiber in my body, I disagree. That was a Pentecost message because it is at Pentecost where we get the antibodies. She said Pentecost where we, <laughs> we get the antibodies and we can fight this virus. It's where Pentecost that we get this slow, fascist, peace control expert called the Holy Spirit that gives us instructions and gives us the same instructions that the experts give us about this virus. Stay away from it. Distance yourself. Stay away from it. Stay away from it. Cover yourself. Cover yourself. Amen. Cover yourself in the blood. Put on the whole lover of God. Cover yourself. Protect yourself. So I think I disagree. I'm sorry. I just disagree with you on that. That, that was a Pentecost message. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. I thank God for listening to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit told me as I was praying and meditating on the word and that was in the middle of the word and the Lord said to me, this is not your word to preach. Amen. Amen. And so the Lord put it on my heart to call up Sister Kirsten and she's such a delight because uh, she's a lover of God. And so when I called her, she I said, I need you to do something. She said, what you need? I said, I need you to speak a word. And she, as always, she said, let me go in prayer, Pastor. And so I'm always encouraged by people who go in prayer. Amen? Amen. And that was a word. There's something that has another virus called sin. Mm. That if we don't deal with that virus, on, we would sir. never be able to deal with any other virus. Right, come on, sir. And yeah. she told us, right, if we don't deal with that virus, we will always have a Minneapolis. We will always have a Ferguson. We will always have a Los Angeles, because it's in that virus that's affected the heart of that police officer. It's that virus that 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 got Eric Gardner killed. It's that virus that that got Brother Castile killed. It's that virus that got Brother Aubrey killed. It's that virus mm -hmm. called sin. Amen. That we got to deal with, and not only did she tell us we had to deal with it, she told us how to deal with it through the power of the Holy Spirit and what the side effects was. Amen. I don't know about you, but I feel all right now. I feel like I can run on to see what the end is like. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for that powerful word. Thank you for being obedient to God and following what God told you to say and what God told you to do. Amen. Amen. Don't forget this afternoon at 4 o'clock will be the Pentecost service for the Missouri Annual Conference. Uh, please join us at 4 o'clock. The same dial-in number that you always dial in, 312-626-6799. Just a different access code, a different access code. That access code is 932-4174-1193 pound. Again, 932-4174-1193 pound. Your pastor will be speaking. Uh, during that time, and so I will certainly hope you will join me in uh, for a word from Pentecost. Amen. The number again is 312-626-6799. It's the call-in number. It's the same call-in number you called in to get on this broadcast. Broadcast 312-626-6799. Follow our access code of 932-4174. 1193 pound 932 4174 1193 pound. If anybody out there didn't get it, you can send a text or a stance on myself. We will get that out to you along with the link that you will be able to join us. Let me thank Sister Cheryl Fair for that beautiful and hard woman prayer this morning and then thank our songbird sister Williams who brought down the house. She can bring down the house even from her house. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. She can bring down the house from her house. Praise ye the Lord. We thank her for rendering songs. Amen. And they were so appropriate and so powerful. And we thank the Holy Spirit. Amen. We actually continue to support this ministry with your gifts, whether you're giving through Giveify. 
givelife.com or whether you're mailing it to 5010 Cavity Avenue, 63113, 5010 Cavity Avenue. We need your support and we thank you for your support in advance. We thank you for all that you have donated to this ministry. We are blessed because of your donations and we just thank you to please keep on giving, click on peace, keep on sowing into this ministry. This is good soil where the word of God goes forth. Amen. Yes, God bless you and God keep you. That ends Great. our broadcast today. Again, thanks. Thank you, Sister Kirsten, for that message. Thank you for allowing God to use you this morning. Thank you for bringing us a Pentecost message. Amen. That a new virus called sin has been affected, that we've been affected by it. But because Pentecost has come, we got power over it. Amen. 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 That's a good word. Amen. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Amen.